He's throwing her now, so I'm sticking her around my bed. <laughs> Is he your protector? He can't be very comfortable. I'm up here, Ryan. You are way up there. Look up my skirt, man. <laughs> <laughs> What's the best hamburger you can make on your griddle? It might be patty melts. So a lot of people have asked how we made our screen for our sliding door. And we're gonna make one for a friend, and I thought that I would explain it a little bit better. In the town of One Rock at Bass Lake, 75 degrees this afternoon. <laughs> You're loving it, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So pretty, he loves it too. It's a pretty good date night. It is a good date. I only get to eat. I do. What are you eating? Jersey Mike's. <laughs> we stopped and got it about four weeks ago put it, put it in, the, in the refrigerator and then it's good today so as much as we'd love to be getting in the van and heading somewhere else this week when you're not full timing your home takes a little bit of your time there are a lot of advantages to being on the road full time but lynn and i are not we are part-time full-timers we travel maybe four and five months at a time under normal circumstances. And the other time we'll spend a month or two at home and then we'll hit the road again. This year, as you guys know, it's been different. This week, the heat index is supposed to be 106 almost every day. It's supposed to rain just about every day. We remodeled our downstairs two years ago, but we never got into the upstairs other than our bedroom. So now, we're going to spend this week remodeling our house instead of traveling. Got to get started. It would be a lot more fun to be fishing. I can tell you that for sure. Like most houses that were built in the 80s, our house came with this acoustic popcorn ceiling on it. So that's the project for this week is to remove the popcorn ceiling, paint the walls, and to clean up the mess that we're gonna make because removing popcorn ceiling while it's an easy task, it makes a mess. So this is another reason that we chose to not travel this week, rainstorms. Yeah, that was close. <laughs> Gosh, I started walking back in and that thing hit really close. Woo, dog is jet. It's a great day to be working inside. Um, I just cut this a little bit too short, but that's okay. Okay. You can always take more on this. That's all right. So yeah. Doing, awesome. the, doing the steps and then we'll keep going. As long as you get most of it covered, I think that's the main thing. Yeah. I'll be glad to get this hall painted. That'll be awesome. I know you will. Thank you, sweetheart. You're welcome, Amanda. You're welcome. Maggie, what are you doing? He's throwing her now, so I'm sticking her around my bed. <laughs> Is he your protector? He can't be very comfortable. Oh, so she's scared. It's all right. It's okay. I promise. Yeah, I'm going to help her, Mom. I'm not afraid. I'm just helping my daddy. Okay. By laying up against his feet. <laughs> <laughs> Did you come out from under the bed? Come on down. Come on. Just be careful. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Just move it down. See, it's about the same. Just be careful where you sit. <laughs> those, last, those last two aren't came down, so be really careful about them. That one for sure is kind of a mess. I'll just jump over that one. Jump over that one. All right, that girl. <laughs> <laughs> well, the steps are taped. It's not perfect, but every drop of paint and crap it keeps off the steps so we don't have to clean up, it's worth it. The next step, start taking this popcorn ceiling off. So about 30 minutes into taking the popcorn ceiling 
off here you can see what I've done so far that far corner over there is ready for me to sand and put some uh, spackling and mud on and then this is had a little bit taken off over here none over there in the corner yet but 30 minutes that's a lot of work let me show you the mess that it makes look at this look at this Jeez, that's why we put that paper down <laughs> I'm up here, Ryan. You are way up there. Look up the skirt <laughs> <laughs> Unless you live full-time in a van or you travel all the time, you probably live somewhere besides your RV, just like we do. We have a sticks and bricks house like a lot of people who travel in RVs, and we like it that way. We like having a home to come home to, especially during these COVID times. It's a really safe feeling to know that you can just hunker down at your home. This week, the weather was terrible, but we got a major project accomplished at home. And it's something that's been on my to-do list for a long time. And I'm glad I got it done. But not as happy as Lynn is. She loves having those kind of projects completed. And if you're married, you know the saying, happy wife, happy life. Griddle me this. What's the best hamburger you can make on your griddle? It might be patty melts with rye bread instead of hamburger buns. Just might be. Today on the griddle, we're gonna do patty melts. Smash burgers made with Swiss cheese and onions and mustard. And a special treat, rye bread. Here we go. So one of the main ingredients for this burger would be sauteed onion. Mm -hmm. So I'm putting some, this side of the griddle is turned off and that way I can just let these heat up on their own and I don't have to worry about them burning. They'll stay perfect. One of the things I like about the 22 inch griddle, we're gonna put three burgers down. And have you seen this? It's the Blackstone Smash Burger Kit. I love it. I guess I love it. I've never used it yet, but I'm thinking I'm going to love it because it makes the burger a consistent size. I'm going to throw a burger down. And let's just make sure this is going to work. A little parchment paper. Wow, look there. That. Another burger down, little parchment paper. Press down until it goes all the way to the grate. And you've got a perfect size smash burger. Little salt and pepper on the burgers. I need to turn the temperature up a little bit so I get a little bit better crust on the burgers. I'm used to this griddle because it's a little different than the one I've had before. But I sure do like it. But you gotta learn how to cook on anything you get. And for me, I'm having to learn the temperatures. It heats up really quickly, but it doesn't cool down very quickly. So it's one thing to consider. You can never do that on a 17 inch griddle. Burgers are ready for cheese now. So as James Gregory would say, this is brown mustard. Who crapped in the mustard? Lynn likes brown mustard. Some things are supposed to be yellow. I've told you that before. 
So I have some mustard for me and some who crap in the mustard for Lynn. This morning we made omelets. We didn't show you that. But the main reason we did is so that we could cook a pack of bacon to season the griddle. But we have some of this bacon left over. So we're gonna put that on all the burgers. This one's mine. Looks good, looks good. Man. Take a bite. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Man, <laughs> that's good. There's no sense just making a burger. Make a patty melt or something that's unique with your griddle. We love this rye bread and we love the grilled onions and it's just ready to go. We're gonna sit down and eat and enjoy a meal together. Thanks for being part of our journey. Griddle me this. What's the best hamburger you can make on your griddle? It might be patty melts with rye bread instead of hamburger buns. Just might be. See you again next week around the griddle. Here we go. <laughs>Time to move on to the Q&A segment of this week's episode. And we'll start with Lynn answering the question about, can you give us more details, all the details you can about how you made that awesome magnetic screen door for the ProMaster Travato van? Here she is. So a lot of people have asked how we made our screen for our sliding door. And we're gonna make one for a friend. And I thought that I would explain it a little bit better since we're in the process of making this one. So the first thing that we did was we took the binding off of both sides, here's side one, side two. We left the binding on the top and we also took the binding off the bottom. So this is half of the screen right here. And then this side of the screen has magnets on it. And this is like- And it breaks thing. apart. Breaks apart. So that's what's gonna be in the middle of the screen. Right. Just folded the screen in half, and we're just gonna cut both sides at the same time. So half of 54. 27 20, inches. 27. And we're to here, and we're gonna mark it. Now this is something that I already had, and it's just a little rotary cutter, and I'm just gonna follow this line, which this, this little template helps a lot because it keeps your line straight, and we'll just follow that all the way down and cut it all the way down. So now we're just marking it. Every so often. But we're still going to use the template to actually do right. it to cut it. But we're just this will just make it easier to put the template on. Right. So, see, we just cut that. So that's on that line. And now we're just going to grab that white line and keep it on there and keep coming down. Now the next step, she's gonna sew the Velcro binding and sandwich this piece here all the way down. Do the same thing on the, on the other side. And then we're just gonna put that right back on there and sew it right back on there. Before we have any fun this week, we gotta get some work done. It's good I slowed this down so people can see you doing it. <laughs> I know I'm slow, but hey, I'm making sure that keeping the screen inside the binding. So I'm done, I got the bottom on. 
One thing that you need to be aware of on the bottom is that on the vel with the Velcro, you need to put your side, put your bottom inside of the Velcro, so the Velcro is going to be on the outside. And on the other side, I made sure that there's a magnet down here at the very bottom, so it'll um, attach at the bottom and also this little magnet will make it where it attaches to the bottom of the door where that little metal piece is which is really really handy so but we're done and it's ready to pack up send off to Nick so I'm gonna send it back with everything it came with instructions which I don't think you need them it also came with the other side of the velcro that's needed and some push pins so it's all in the box and it's ready to go Okay, so on to question number two. Jackie Collier said, Owen, who determines which ads are uploaded in front of your videos? Is that something you select or is that done by someone else for you? Well, actually, it's done by YouTube, which is owned by Google. But we have absolutely no control over which ads show up and what you're gonna see. Google looks at your viewing history of everything, what you search for in Google and what you watch on YouTube and lots of other places too, try to determine the best ad that they can place in front of you that you're most likely to click on. The problem right now is since we're right in the middle of an election in the US, a lot of the dollars being poured into advertising now are dollars that are spent for advertising for upcoming candidates. So you may see ads about things that you don't agree with, and that probably means we wouldn't agree with it either. But to answer your question, we cannot control that. You can click on the little elliptor down, the three little dots at the bottom, and select the option to not show this advertiser, and that'll cut down on some of what you're doing, and it will teach Google what you like and don't like. Or every now and then, if you see one you like, you can actually click on the ad and go to that advertiser, and I bet you'll get more of those. I wish it were different, but that's just the way it is. We appreciate you watching, and we appreciate you having a concern, but reaching out to Lynn and I to let us try to resolve it for you. I hope that we did. Thanks, Jackie. Question number three comes from Jane in South Carolina, better known on our YouTube channel as Mike Manjo. Wow, the pancakes looked amazing and Crabtree Falls was awesome. I bet you were exhausted. A question for you. I know you've given some consideration to a Class C. We have a Winnebago Outlook 25. Do you have enough space in the Travado? Or do you still consider a C? Just worrying about downsizing pros and cons. Have a great week. You're getting so skilled at editing, like the slow-mo waterfalling. <laughs> Thanks, Jane. We appreciate it. Well, you've got an awesome RV, 25 feet. That's a pretty good size. I got to tell you, in this week's episode, well, you're going to see us park our van in a regular parking place up at Bass Lake and Blowing Rock. 25 foot RV wouldn't fit into there. So, yeah, we think about it all the time. I've got my eyes on a leisure travel van wonder even right now. I would love to have that garage to put our paddle boards and to put our bikes in, but it's 25 feet. Four feet doesn't sound like a lot, but it's a lot when you consider it. You think about where you're gonna park it and where you're gonna put it. It's something you have to consider. For us, we're so used to just going anywhere we wanna go in the Travado that it would take a really big upside to make us want to change right now. But that may happen in the future. There are a lot of downsides to getting so small and I can guarantee you that we think about that a lot. But for now, we're sticking with the Travato. The next question comes from Liz K. 93 and it's frying egg on the sidewalk kind of day here today. No griddle required, laugh out loud. Thank you for taking us along on your Blue Ridge adventure. You're welcome. <laughs> I have three questions, please. Is the Blackstone griddle at your home a 28 inch? The Blackstone that you have travel, is it a 17? And did I hear Owen say that the cost was $5 per night for the national campground there in the national forest? Okay, 28, nah. We have the, we have the new Blackstone Adventure 22 inch griddle here, and I believe it's all Lynn and I need. It does get small if I try to cook for our entire family, but we try to make that work. 
You are right about the Blackstone in the van though. It's the 17 inch, but it's not the adventure version that just came out. It's the older version. If I could do it all over again, I'd get the brand new one because the burner's better, the knobs are better, and having the grease trap in the back, that's a winner. Okay, and then your last question was about the campground that we stayed at there. Yes, it was $10 a night, and a lot of national park and national forest campgrounds are somewhere between 10 and 20, maybe up to $30 a night. And if you're 62 years old or older, and you have the golden senior Euro geezer pass, you get all that for half price. So the $10 became $5 a night, and we were pretty happy with that. If you're old enough and you don't have the national park pass, it's $80 right now, but it's $80 for a lifetime. If you're under 62 years old, it's $80 per year, but you don't get the discounts to the campgrounds. Thanks for all the questions. We appreciate you always being with us. The next question comes from Ed Frambez. I'm gonna murder that, aren't I? I'm sorry, Ed. <laughs> F-R-A-M-B-E-S. Thank you for sharing another adventure with us. Great views. Hiking up and down the falls was beautiful. Could be a bad experience if you fell down though. Did you research getting a PLB, my friend? Be safe and stay healthy. Happy tales. Well, in a previous video, he had asked us if we had heard about a PLB, a personal location beacon. And there are several of them on the market, but Lynn and I wanna ask you guys, do you use one? Is it something that makes you feel safer? And do you think we need one? Because Ed, we right now we just have our phones and that's what we take with us. And we haven't really looked into getting a PLB or the expense that comes with having a monthly subscription to it. But we pay to do the same thing for Maggie, so maybe we should do that for ourselves. Thanks for caring about us so much to want to make sure that we are safe when we're out there. And we appreciate your kind comments. The final question this week comes from Teresa Durham. I always love your music for the videos. I didn't see where you have a link or the credits. Where do you get your music to edit with? Well, Teresa, thank you for loving our videos. We get our music from a company known as EpidemicSound.com. We pay a monthly subscription to be able to use any of the music in any of our videos as long as we keep our subscription up to date. So all the music you hear in each video each week comes from Epidemic Sound. Now, we don't put credits in there because many times I'll download these songs 50 and 60 at a time and then I listen to them when we're on the road, try to decide what fits best with what we're doing, and then I'll put that into the video. So I'm not really sure about who did it, I just have the title of the song. So, and I'm also a little lazy. By the time I get the video uploaded, I usually have 30 hours involved in the edit, at least 20, and going back and putting all the information in, eh, I'm not sure I have the time to do that and I'm probably too lazy for that. But I have a solution for you. If I hear a song and I don't know who sings it, but I wanna know, I can bring up an app on my iPhone or an Android phone called Shazam. Click on the little button, Shazam will listen to the music, even if there's a crowd noise around and everything, and it'll tell you the artist and the song, and it'll give you a link so you can go listen to it yourself, and you can even buy it or download it if you belong to one of those services that will allow you to do that. You can also ask Google on your Android phone, what is that song? And you can ask Siri, what is that song? Neither one of those are as good as Shazam though. Shazam just kicks butt when it comes to being able to identify just about anything. So I may remember next week to put the credits in, but I'll probably forget in the future and I'll probably get lazy again. But if I do, you can always ask us and we'll tell you, or use Shazam and you can find it yourself. We're glad you like our music. We love Epidemic Sound. It's made a really big difference in how we edit our videos and, and the feeling we get from those videos. Well, that wraps up this week's Q&A. Bunch of questions. We're glad you guys are so interested in what we do, and we're glad you're always along with us. If you have a question and you'd like for Lynn and I to answer it, just leave it in the comments below, and one of us will get to it in the upcoming episode. If it's a private question and you don't want to leave it here for everyone to see, you can go to vantrekkinglifestyle.com slash contact. And there's a little form you can fill out there that'll send the question to us and we'll begin an email conversation with you that way. No matter how you reach out to us, it always makes us feel less lonely 
to know that you guys are out there and you want to know about what we're doing. We appreciate that. It's been a long week. You've seen all the work we've done in the house and making the screen for Nick and everything else. We deserve to go play for a while. Yeah, now. let's go do something fun. There's nothing like cranking up the van and going for a little day trip. You know, the van works out really well for trips like this. We could bring a little car, we get a little bit better gas mileage, and seats are a little more comfortable, not much. But we don't have a bathroom in the car. We don't have a refrigerator. You know, it just works out to be something really perfect for us to take the van. When you're full timing in a van like this, making a little trip up to go walk around the lake and see the mountains, well, it's something you do every day. And it's not necessarily, I guess it's special, but it's even more special when you've been working all week and you can just hop in the van and go for a little trip like this and just have a good time. It seems to me like it feels like it's more special than when you're doing it every single day of the week. Is that That's right. Kind of like day time. It is. We have a day time. Have a day. If things go well, we have a bed. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. One of my favorite ones. I said, tell me your story. He took out a notepad. And wrote something for me. Walking on down the road And I watched him disappear like smoke And I thought I'd just seen a ghost Then I looked down at what he wrote He said, son, when you grow up you'll be fine questions on your mind Life is gonna happen one way or the other Whether you like it or not Stop looking for the answers And you'll find What you've got In the town of One Rock At Bass Lake 75 degrees this afternoon <laughs> You're loving it, aren't you? Yeah <laughs> Yeah. It's, a pretty, he loves it too. it's a pretty good date night. It is a good date. I
0.7 miles around Bass Lake, but it is so pretty when the sun is going down. Yes. Peaceful place. It's a Friday night, so it's pretty busy. Yeah, a lot of people here. But just look at the view, man. When you grow up, you'll be fine. So we lucked out here. We had a really good time walking around Bass Lake. It's usually really difficult to get out of here in any kind of bigger vehicle, but we don't have anybody on that side of me and nobody behind me. So this should be a piece of cake. So step one of date night is over. We had a wonderful time hiking around Bass Lake. Beautiful place. Now we're gonna go up and get on the parkway, the Blue Ridge Parkway, find us a place to put a blanket down and dinner wait on the sunset <laughs> okay we're going back across 421 still on the parkway in search of the perfect place to watch the sun go down on the parkway perfect means you can see the sun go down over a mountain and nobody else knows that it exists. And we can park there by ourselves. get to eat I did. what are you eating jersey mike's <laughs> we stopped and got it about four weeks ago put it, put it in, the, in the refrigerator and then uh. it's good today hard to beat the, the show we're getting to see the yeah. sunset yeah that's pretty cool Blackberries. Not sure. Nope. Not right.
sunset. What a wonderful day. And it's been a long week. We'll end this week's video with a look at nature. And one of our favorite things about nature, sunsets. We're glad you're part of our journey. And we hope you're safe. We hope you're healthy. And we hope we get to park beside of you soon at a campground near us or near you. And until then, little Maggie's about as happy tails as she can get. <laughs> and she would wish you happy tails. See you next Sad Sunday. Son, when you grow up, you'll be fine. I know you've got questions on your mind. Life is gonna happen one way or the other. Whether you like it or not. Stop looking for the answers and you'll find. Mm -hmm. Found me a sunset. <laughs>